That is one dark rye whiskey. Maryland Sagamore Spirit Distillery recently announced a new limited release from its reserve series, an eight-year-old straight rye whiskey. Now, Sagamore actually released an eight-year-old rye back in 2021, which was available at the distillery and in select markets, but this year, this expression will be available throughout their entire distribution footprint. One thing I've been wanting to do is put this against the ever popular Thomas H. Handy from Buffalo Trace, and it looks like today is gonna be the day. Stay tuned, it's the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C from The Master and Drum. Welcome back to the show, like, subscribe, do all the things you need to do to help grow the channel for 2023. Appreciate it, everybody here in the Whiskey Tube family. Sagamore Spirit, if you don't already know, has been the driving force behind Rye Whiskey's resurgence in Maryland. Maryland, along with Pennsylvania, was an absolute rye whiskey hub of pre-prohibition, and Sagamore Spirit is trying to bring that back. Their core offerings include their signature rye whiskey, cast strength rye whiskey, and double oaked rye whiskey. They recently launched their first Maryland distilled bottled and bond straight whiskey back in November of 2021. The reserve series, aside from the eight year, also includes the port finish, rum cask finish, and one of my favorite rods they've ever made of all time, that's sherry finish. That thing is delicious. I don't say delicious very often, but I'm just saying it's that good. Okay, so more about the eight year. Brian Tracy, Sagamore Spirits co-founder and president said that more time in a barrel doesn't always translate to better whiskey, but this release shows what can come from careful, expert aging and thoughtful blending. He also said that the patience and care our distilling team took with this release, dating back over eight years ago, set the blueprint for the whiskeys that would follow. All right, so here are the core stats. So being older whiskey, this comes from Sagamore's source stocks that include eight year MGP rye whiskeys. 85% of the blend is the high rye mash bill from MGP, which is probably the 95.5, and 25% is the low rye rye mash bill from MGP. Bottled, uncut, unfiltered, 111.4 proof for this beautifully designed 750 milliliter bottle. Price for it, 80 bucks. Now I got to try the one from last year that was a you know smaller release. It was distillery only. It was also only introduced in certain markets and it was really good, but I've already heard that this one's better. So let's dive in. Oh, oh my God. Oh guys, the nose on this is Really, really superb for a rye whiskey. First thing that smacks me in the face on this is black cherry. Not not ripe red cherry, but black cherry. Heavy, heavy vanilla. Man, I get roasted almonds in this all day long. Black cherry and roasted almond. Some of the rye spice that's underlying in there is, the big note that punches out is clove. I mean, you get a lot of clove in this, I think. Very savory, very rich. Something that you normally will get in some older ryes. Sometimes you get on some younger ryes too, but it comes off as more of a, um, like a raw clove. This, this clove smells like it's like been baking in the oven for a little longer, you know? Like a, like a toasted clove note. A Little bit of mint. Yeah, it's this crazy combination of like really sweet, but also some good rye flavor, some traditional rye flavor. So let's give it a try. That might be the best rye whiskey I've, I've tasted so far this year. And I've tried a lot of rye already in uh, 2023. That is absolutely stellar. I mean, first sip impression so far, a lot of that black cherry comes in the forefront. I get that spice and almond note that I was getting, that spice and roasted almond note all in the back end. And it just kind of continues and just sits there. Mm. Not so much of a hug here, kind of stays here. Nice finish to it. For 111 proof, I don't know if it's the location of the barrels, maybe just it was a little bit more concentrated, some more alcohol was lost, and it just makes it really rich in flavor. I'm getting like this black cherry, raisin, like Fig Newton thing going on. This thing is crazy. H for eight years and new charred oak barrels. There's definitely a dark fruit note to it. I, I'm. I think there is a hint of raisin, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with like black cherry. I love the black cherry note that's on this. It's very rich, it's very powerful, uh, but all that spice that's intermingled in there, the mint, the a little bit of a black tea, but really the clove, that mix of, of vanilla and clove together with the almond on the finish, with a little bit of the dark fruit is just killer. 
It's just, it's all just like sweet and candy up front and then it just turns into beautiful rye whiskey goodness on the back end. You know, a sip of that. That third sip, citrus, now starting to make it to the forefront, like a, like a blood orange, not like a regular orange. This is a very rich, dense type of orange note. This actually is drinking like an old fashioned now that I just like came to my, just hit me in the head. Yeah, th it, it's like this high proof old fashioned. It is delicious. And it makes sense, all the stuff I've been saying. <laughs> it's like you make an old fashioned with a rye whiskey rather than a bourbon, because you have all the spice on the back end, but this like rich cherry, uh, this like dark black cherry note, like coupled with this rich orange, like an orange bitter, but like a blood orange bitter type thing going on. This rich vanilla note, all this sweet, all this spice. It's exactly what this is. But I would no way ever put this in an old fashioned. It's just too good to drink on its own. All right, we gotta put this up against Thomas H. Haney. This could be a true competitor for that bottle. Let's see. All right, so here's my bottle, Thomas H. Haney. I do not have much of this left. This is 125.7 proof. I believe this is either 2021 or 22. So, you know, it's been, I've had it a while. I don't drink it very often. Honestly, it's a good bottle, but I do think there are, you know, given today's landscape of rye whiskeys, I think there's better rise in this. I mean, some years are better than others. This is retails for $99, but you have to find this one. And generally when you do find it, as everybody knows, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection are usually priced way, way higher. So let's compare noses first. All right, so the one thing I get on the Thomas H. Handy, I do get a little bit of a raisin note that's similar to the, uh, to the Sagamore. But it just also is coming off a little bit sweeter, which is not surprising considering it's Buffalo Trace. A little bit of a sweeter rye. Definitely get a little bit of that mintiness. I get the vanilla. I think there's a little bit more of a caramel type note in the Thomas H. Handy, which is, I mean, there could be some caramel in the Sagamore, but I really think it's overshadowed by those rich flavors that kind of remind me of a old fashioned. So there's some similarities, but they're pretty different. Honestly, on the nose, God, this is like turning into like an almond cookie too on the nose now. Like this almond, like biscotti cookie. Oh my God, what is happening in there? This is a little bit more straightforward. I would say on the nose, the Sagamore wins easily. I think the Sagamore actually is way more complex than the Thomas H. Handy. All right, let's give it a try. Again, very sweet here. I get the citrus here on the Thomas H. Handy too. I get the citrus. I get, I get more of a regular like orange peel maybe like a lemon meringue type thing going on. And then on the back end, there's a little of that dark fruit, that little bit of a raisin hint that I get. Again, you go along with those minty rye flavors, a very sweet, delicious rye, good proof point. And I think one thing too, is even at only six years and change on the Thomas H. Handy, it has this really, really well-aged, almost dusty note like funk to it that really, really sells it. Like, like if you told me this was a nine to 10 year old rye, I might believe you, which I think is a testament to how Buffalo Trace ages their Buffalo Trace antique collection. All right, to the Sagamore. So what the Sagamore lacks in, in like a illusion of high age, it makes up for with the depth of flavor and the richness that it has. I think they're two different animals, but I really do think that if you try these both head to head, I think most people would prefer this, just given today's palates, um, because of how rich and sweet and dense it is. The Thomas H. Haney is a very, very good rye whiskey, but I just feel like there's more in the Sagamore. I don't know. I would have to try these blind, but honestly, even just trying them head to head, they are pretty different. I feel like I'd be able to tell which is which, but you never know, maybe a future double base in order. All right, final breakdown on the Sagamore Spirit eight year. Here we go. All right, price for the Sagamore eight year from the reserve series, uh, 79.99, so 80 bucks. Secondary market value, you don't really see these too much on secondary. Availability, I'm not gonna say good because Sagamore isn't you know, widely available too much yet across the United States. But I will say that it's average. So it's a, it's a decent availability, especially with this release now going to all their different markets. So if you get Sagamore near you, you'll have a great shot of finding this one. Value for this one, eight years old, cast strength, non chill filtered, blend of two different MGP high rye mash bills, 80 bucks, high value.
Does it's not even it, it's not even a thought in my mind because I've seen rye whiskeys that have come out 9, 10, 11 years old that are way over that 150 plus. So given the fact that this is an eight year old rye whiskey made by one of the best rye producers in the United States right now, coming in under $100 and not just under, but well under $100 at 80 bucks, then I think it's an absolutely high value. Uh, the most I pay for this, given it's such a high value, I, I would be happy paying retail for this. Absolutely great price on that one. Alternatives to this one was tough. Like just thinking of a really good rye whiskey with this age at this price point, honestly, the only one that I can think of that gets pretty close, obviously you have to always kind of add Pikesville to the mix. That's six years old. It's 110 proof, which is one proof point under this. Really great, you know, flavors in that one. But I mean, when I'm sipping this, it it's reminding me of like a higher proof Michter's 10 year rye or even a Michter's barrel strength rye, but with more dense types of flavors to it. That's really, the only rye I could think in comparison. Uh, so if you really love those flavor profiles, then you're gonna absolutely love this. And a recommend, I don't think I really have to go through it. This is a very much yes, and I would even go as far to say buy it and back it up. I think that this is such a good rye whiskey for the price. If you can get two of them, get two of them, because I think you'll drink through these so damn fast because of the, uh, the approachability of it, how flavorful it is, the richness, the, the, uh, the, the cocktail-like flavor profile it has, being both sweet, spicy, dense, rich. This is an absolute hitter of a rye whiskey. Easily a contender for rye whiskey of the year. We have to see what I taste for the rest of the year. But this thing is so damn good already. I'm going to fly through this bottle. So here you go. All right, guys. I well, hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new Sagamore 8-Year Rye Whiskey. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Let me know if anyone watching has tried this one yet, what you think of it. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers. I'll see you next time right here on the Master Drum. Cheers, everybody.